it's gonna be really um i guess like i don't know like cliche i guess um but imagine all right we're into tropes here <laughs> yeah. yeah um but imagination i feel like is the main thing so i feel like in um unless you have people who are constantly guiding the discussion about like where hope should lie like what we are aspiring to what we're looking for the future to look like what we what the idealist world would be and the push for it um i don't think that you could actually get very far so we need mm -hmm. fans who are you know like most of the time fans are really big fans of the things because it's um it's voicing an ideal or some value that they really hold in their own life and they want to see it in their own life in some way they could. And um, I think fans are like perfectly poised to bring their imagination um, into making the world better for everyone. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I think another really wonderful skill is that fans are able to see in the corners where the original IP wasn't intended to explore. Mm -hmm. Whether it's shipping, whether it's fan fiction, whether it's we're always able to look around and go, oh, wait a minute, what about this instead of this? And I think that particular way of looking at um, the things that we do, we'll call it, you know, the things that we love, is that we are able to do that with actual real life situations. So I think mm -hmm. that we can trans, I think being a fan and involved in fandom, and don't let any of the dumbass gatekeepers tell you that you're not a fan. If you're a fan, say you're a fan, you're a fan. <laughs> so put that out yeah. there. But my whole thing is, it's able to look at, it's, 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 it's collective creative problem solving. It's kind of like we do collective storytelling in role playing games. We are able mm -hmm. to take those same skills filtered through the lens of what we dig and then address the real world in a way that other people haven't done prior to us. And so I think that's mm -hmm. a very useful skill. Yeah, I, I love yeah. you the way you phrase that of like looking at the corners of things and around the corners of things. I mean, like, I love this thing, but <laughs> here is something else that there could be or is a different way we could remix it or look at it. Something that I think about a lot is the beauty and value of meta in fandom and in history and understanding the world today because like fans are just pumping out thousands of words of meta on tumblr or in tiktoks <laughs> and like all kinds of different places just giving it away for free and then mm -hmm. i think those pathways in the brain are very related to like looking back in history and being like man homelessness is really bad in our country right now. Like, why is it there so much? Going back to 1959, when this policy <laughs> was put in place and da, da, da. Mm -hmm. there's like a level of analysis that fans are naturally developing the muscle for that has been lost in uh, other, other parts of our like sort of public um, education and like public shared knowledge and like so i think like that imagination piece is so so important but that mm -hmm. analyst piece that gets written off as like fans just going too deep like no like we don't have people going like deep enough in down the right rabbit holes right now and so like i don't know i think that's i think that's a really big thing and i have another yeah. one too but i'm going to save it in case janae has one she wants to say <laughs> um i i want to give a, a very hard skill example so if you have another like you know, soul example please please share <laughs> <laughs> uh my i my other thing i was like the, the strong ties of fandom and like the thing that gets you to show yeah. up and do social yeah. justice work is yeah. because is not because you just like found it on the internet and felt called to show up like you're much more likely to show up if your friend that you know and trust and you know met in the neopets forum or something whatever <laughs> like if they're like, I am going, you should come, or this thing is important to me, you should call your senders or like whatever. Like those yeah. strong ties are what, and like fandom mm -hmm. already has them organically. Um, yeah. And so it's not something you have to spend a lot of time building when you're then trying to uh, do a social justice uh, action within a fan community. Yeah. 
fan, fans are already well trained in like deep canvassing work you know yeah. like <laughs> we we know how to do that kind of stuff um and so i wanted i wanted to give this uh very specific um more hard skill example because i think a lot of times as fans even now we can kind of have this feeling that like oh my gosh there's so much happening in the world there's so much going on like is me playing this online game or is me doing whatever thing um really helping and last year uh phantom forward did a text bank session with headcount um and if you don't know how that works, basically, like every text message has to be when you get one of those, like, hey, did you remember to vote? Those have to be sent by real people. And so they do yeah. these text bankings where people get into a room and you're having to hit the button to send the text to people. And we sent more texts more quickly than any other group they had had that year. And we're like, oh, my gosh, you all are like you blew through so many texts so fast. And we were like, yeah. We're a bunch of nerds who are really good at hitting buttons quickly on the internet. Like <laughs> we were made for this. <laughs> like this is great. So I just think that like don't don't underestimate like some of the skills that you all have gained from just like existing in your internet um, spaces. Like you know they are transferable. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, you can use them. Um, I just like all the time now. Whenever I'm like doing my like Stardew watering my plants or something i'm like i'm preparing for text banking i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> this is going to come go. in handy <laughs> yeah um but so i i want to address actually um you know we had this conversation right off the bat of harry potter but um and i i think uh it's important to to name this and to talk about you know as fans um the internet has changed a lot about fandom for the good, I think. Um, it's made our communities better connected and easier to connect with, um, and that's fantastic. And I think probably on the downside, it's also put some of the uh, views of creators that um, have created these stories or the corporations that have owned these stories uh, front and center and very close um, and easy to find and maybe too easy for them to share, right? Um, so I think it's, as we're thinking about what does it mean to be a fan organizer or a fan activist right now, um, what do you all think about what it means to be a fan of something that's problematic or something that was made by a creator who's problematic? Like, how do you reconcile that? Mm. Still in the process of reconciling it. Yeah. 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 I think uh, part of it is just not shying away from it. Like just being like, yeah, the person that created it is kind of shitty and they're doing bad things <laughs> and they're a bad person and we don't associate or give them money anymore. But as a like fan, you're allowed to like what you like as long as you like. I think like as long as you accept that yeah this might be a bad thing like it has caused problems uh mm -hmm. yeah someone said the hp lovecraft solution yeah like dude was a major racist like that's something very very known about him but you know people still love his stories and i mean luckily he's not alive anymore at least not in a human body um so <laughs> we don't have to give him money and stuff like that um but yeah i think the first thing is like not not trying to hide the fact that this person is a problematic or just pure evil like just deal with it and go from there yeah. i would argue for what did the original experience of the property do for you and not mm. conflate the creator's views with the effect that you got from their production Mm -hmm. That's a very professorial. I'm in, I'm writing syllabi now, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in school mode now, but no. But the way it is, it's like if <laughs> Harry Potter gave you a great feeling and it gave you motivation and it gave you, you that's yours. There's nothing mm -hmm. that should be able to take that particular um, building blocks of your fan for some away from me because I think it's unfair to yourself to throw something away because someone 
X amount of years down the road decides to be a jerk about it. But mm -hmm. will you continue to support that individual creator? Probably not. But that time that you were exposed to whatever it was, that time where you were where you were able to go, wait a minute, I mean, this is a property that people were putting their Hogwarts houses in their bios, their social media, and their dating profiles. I mean, the impact <laughs> of it is undeniable. Mm -hmm. What it's done for people is undeniable. The amount of literacy that series has put into the world is undeniable. The whole turfy fuck with it this is unfortunate. <laughs> But the reality is we all were transformed by that work and to deny that positive transformation, I think is a detriment to us because then it's always, then it's always us sacrificing a part of ourselves at the altar of what's supposed to be correct at the time. And I don't think you should sacrifice anything of yourself unless it's negative. Your external force on me is not my responsibility, but how mm -hmm. I receive and process and engage with your work, that's wholly mine. Yeah. I think also like a huge part of that positive transformation had nothing to do with the author really like the yes the words on paper and everything but like so much of the positive transformation that people felt was like being able to have this shared language where if somebody put in like mm -hmm. in their bio said i'm a hufflepuff you were like okay like i i know i know what your vibe is like i get that and like mm -hmm. the amount of like just and not even just in harry potter but this happens in like every big fandom just the amount of like creativity that comes out of it and relationships that people build and making stuff together and that that stuff does not lose its meaning because like the person at the top of the hierarchy turned out not to be uh, great in many, many ways. Like, I don't know. I think all, I think all the time also about the fact that like our, um, our shared cultural myths are pretty much all owned by corporations and millionaires and billionaires and like we we have to wrestle with like that's where we are at this point in human history is that uh the the shared stories and things we celebrate are coming from sources that are uh questionably moral at best and that does not demean the community that gets built up around it i don't think yeah but it is something to constantly be sort of wrestling with and figuring out how you feel and and constantly sort of like uh adjusting and attuning to that and and figuring out how you want to spend your money and time around that thing yeah i think a lot about um how we just at this point in human history, because we are so good at documentation and because we're so well connected, because there's so much communication, like we don't we don't have a situation like nobody knows if the original author of the first version of like Little Red Riding Hood was problematic, right? We just we don't know. <laughs> Because like mm -hmm. that story is probably so was though if I Pro had to like, guess probably I would I would bet that probably they were but like it doesn't super matter anymore because that story has been so transformed and remixed and like means so many things to so many people and can be understood in so many different contexts and I think that it is really just a like we have to wrestle with what it means to to have these shared stories in a time where like that kind of in that is much it's much more difficult for that to happen for us right and so we're kind of uncharted territory um but yeah I'm, I'm sure that the authors of most of our fairy tales were super problematic <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, um, yeah my note is like so for for me like getting into the community of like harry of the harry potter fandom um was like the driving force of me being part of the fandom in general um and so being part of the fandom, people, the part of the fandom that I was part of was very critical of the text anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and so when this came up, um, it 
just reminded I was already in a place of being very critical of the works and like we were openly like talking to other fans at conventions about the problem problems in this mm -hmm. in the text and having fun with it um but it did change my viewpoint on some of the problems that I had scoped out now have a different meaning to me Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like gender and like Gryffindor house and those stairs and like just different things like that like me have changed so much and what they mean so even engaging with the text has no longer become a thing that I can do and engaging with the community I can do engaging with the text I can't like it just I can't divorce what she has said about and then how the text was written from like, mm -hmm. this is what she meant versus what I initially thought she meant and not having that ability. So I can understand people, I want to, I keep grabs of like the connections I made with the community and the being able to be critical about the things that I love. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also very like, uh, I just cannot uh, return to the text. And I, at least right now I can't return to the text without hearing that voice of what she actually meant and the harm that was being done in that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like house elves, yeah, we talked about house elves. Like we talked about some, like so many things that are just really awful, how Kingsley Shacklebolt, we only talk about how black he was and how bald he was and how he had an earring. Like it's very, there's so many problems in that story. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to know, I just saw a trailer for Foundations um, the on Apple TV. And mm, I was like, yeah. Isaac Isamoff, there's problems with Isaac Isamoff, what is it? And I looked it up and I'm like, oh, he's a misogynist um, and he's dead. <laughs> but now, and we have like this new series and the main character, I, I don't know if the main character in um, the original story was a woman or not, but the, in the, this version, mm -hmm. it's a black woman. Um, so I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. Some like when these things change, when these things take on a different tone. That like I also like had a podcast on Lovecraft Country. It was like black people taking over like Lovecraft Country, but also that book was originally written by white, who's not problematic as much as Lovecraft is. But like there's so many different ways that things get remixed over time. And so I'm mm -hmm. always in this place of like constantly thinking about um uh, do I want to enjoy a property because it looks real cool? But then also like like if it's going to give the money to the estates or whatever, am I also mm -hmm. like encouraging uh, Hollywood to continue to put forward properties that were initially problematic just because I like how they remixed it, you know? So it's kind of mm -hmm. like this like back and forth um, of being a fan of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you ever come to a conclusion. I don't mm -hmm. anyway. I, I think it's a constant... Um, Thinking critically, seeing what what set what feels good to you, um, what feels right to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Sean, Sean saying in the chat also Orson Scott Card was another great example. It was just... that was grim. Ooh. That was the yeah. first time I had this experience of being betrayed, but <laughs> I did I mean... not because I read like all those books and then found out afterwards and was just like no. <laughs> No. Someone else put Marion Zimmer Bradley, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, well, this panel of people could talk about problematic fandom for like several hours. Um, <laughs> we, are, we all have very deep thoughts about this subject, but I do want to get us. Um, I want to get us thinking about some some positive pieces of fans fighting back. Although I think that like learning how to reconcile problematic authority figures and like critical fandom is a positive but like you know let's do let's talk about <laughs> what we want to see next it just um, reminds me of that facebook filter that you can put on now that says i have a healthy distrust of authority and also i'm vaccinated <laughs> <laughs> is, like pick the right authorities to have a problem with right like Indeed. your public health <laughs> officials if they if i can trust that they're looking out for my health I'm listening to them. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. I have a healthy distrust of authority and also like Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to mention we will um, get to some Q&As. So if anyone has any, uh, feel free to drop those in the Q&A panel and I will take a look-see. Um, but in the meanwhile, friends, panelists. I think there's something you brought up today about like, um, oh, yeah. it seems like most of the talk about fandom lately has been about the, the toxic mayonnaise boys, and especially <laughs> in comics, like Comic Gate and Game and all that stuff. What I think that we really, we really leave out is that joy is an absolutely revolutionary act and fandom brings us joy. Yeah. And, you know, being yeah. able to be in like this 
disgusting world that we're in right now, but still being able to watch up and go, oh my goodness, this makes me feel good inside, not just yeah. as, a, as a way to dis distract myself, but also as a way to motivate action towards something else. Yeah. That to me, I think gets left out quite often in talks about fandom. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's such a superpower. It's such a, uh, it just like, so few things do that right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> so few things like have have that effect. Um, yeah, Colin yeah. saying we deserve joy that motivates us. I think that's a beautiful um, yeah. phrase. Colin, mm -hmm. I will give you royalties, but I'm gonna put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy cool. one down. You two yeah. collab, let's make it happen. <laughs> I like yeah. it, I like it. Yeah, I, uh, we we have been talking a lot about um doing some work around the avatar franchise because like that is one that brings us great joy and also has really easy parallels to climate change which is something that doesn't bring me it brings me other emotions in great quantity um yeah. <laughs> and but but we um yeah, I don't know. We've been talking with some of the folks who are organizing around Stop Line 3, and we're going to have some stuff coming up about that. And it's just like, I don't know. It's a it, it's something I'm really looking forward to in, and have been enjoying learning more about, like, the connections and parallels we can make and how we can, like, use that to get people excited for, like, watching Avatar and making change in a way that like I haven't felt really motivated around uh climate change not in a positive way I felt motivated in other emotions but like the the joy element has been missing and it's like starting to come back to me a little bit as we have been um talking about doing this so that mm -hmm. that's a that's a big thing and also just feeling joy in general is important to your soul even if you don't use it directly to do a social justice project it's just going to make it possible for you to do social justice projects yeah yeah i also um i think it's just important to note especially in this space that i know this is true of harry potter fandom i think it's true of a lot of fandoms that like the fandom as we know it was built by the labor of queer and trans people. Like that is just how we got to where we are. And I think like acknowledging that is super important and like owning um, the fact that this is the space that was created is important and amazing. Um, so as we're thinking about the future uh, and what we do next and what we wanna see next, um, it's to me this is kind of a it feels like an insurmountable question right now right it feels like there are a million and one things that need to be done and could be done um at the same time that we're also just like still as a world like processing a lot of grief um so i i'm curious are we processing if, it? maybe not maybe it's still yet to process <laughs> we're processing yeah. a lot of the way we're processing it's it in the way that Western society has taught us to process it by denial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. By just and consuming is fine. it endlessly and then ignoring yeah. it. It depends on the day of the week, honestly. <laughs> on like Tuesday, I might not be. On Wednesday, sure, perhaps. Um, <laughs> no. But like, what do, what do we want to see like in our communities? Because I think um, all of you here uh, play important roles in the community. I'm talking to the chat and also all of the people on this panel are so embedded deeply in fandom spaces, what do we want to see out of fandom communities and fandom creation um, as it pertains to kind of making the world we want to imagine, uh, to highlight Portia's word? I guess for me, I just want less silos. I want fewer silos between fandoms. Mm, yeah. Right now we get very like just into our own thing and we don't and see how they cross and interconnect and inform each other. Mm -hmm. And you have like, you know, the corny stuff like Star Trek and Transformers comics that are just money grabs, but yeah. actually having fandoms coming together and really understanding what they share. I mean, there were um, right before the, the Ponderosa hit, there was um, <laughs> uh, people at my university I teach at were going to do a um, Avatar um, versus Studio Ghibli cook off. 
um, at our at our oh, at our university. So but then, but then, the, but then no. the pandemic hit, and then we haven't been oh, to campus in eighteen months. No. <laughs> you know, nineteen months. I'm not going back until no. actually. Imagine how uh, good spring. that cook off's going to be oh, when it happens. No, I was like, I'm, I was ready to judge. I was there. I'm like, Taylor, yeah. well, Taylor, will whatever you need. Oh, no, as Were you long as there's no like, Brussels sprouts, I'm fine. Like we can you do need whatever a taste you want. Tester? Like okay, I'll do whatever. And they were, I mean, they had like posters up. They had everything up. It was oh, incredible. Wow. And then it was like, oh, sorry, we're not going. Panini cool. tragedies, no, no end. <laughs> yes, my cabbages, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And that was actually one of the posters, actually, that was advertising the, the food battle, which I thought was wonderful. But yeah, we need, to, we need to really just really figure, like, figure out, like, get out of the tribalism and get into communalism of what fandom is. I mean, because like, as you were saying earlier, women and queer folk started all of this and we routinely exclude them or or question their, their, their fandom credentials, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if you want to think about just queer folks in general, There'd be no hip hop without queer folks because mm -hmm. there'd be no hip, there'd be no black church without queer <laughs> folks. I mean, like there's so much that we're actually like, you know, this whole hullabaloo about Tim Drake coming out as bi. I'm like, well, did he come out as straight? And everybody's all <laughs> and everybody's all mad at me. I mean, but there's all these things that we need to really start bringing this together because right now we are in, you know, there's climate. There is a possible Republican governor of California coming in September. There's all of these things that are happening right now at the same time that I think that by through our radical communalism that we will be able to get through and make new um, new patterns and new paths for people coming behind us to come to come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, MJ said what I was going to say, I, in a way, um, I would love to see better representation across the board, um, ability, gender, race, sexuality, like I would love to see more of that, but like particularly from, I know we don't do this, uh, so say this anymore, but from own voices creators, like seeing them propped up into having the billing and the range that all these white creators have had for like these Amazon deals, the HBO deals, like I would love to see yeah. that happen for these underrepresented uh, underrepresented and marginalized creators. I would love to see that kind of uh, work come out. Um, and I would love to see people who have been put in these communities uh, be the ones who are creating those works. I would love to support people who are, you know, already, like I've already been supporting. Um, and from like a, like a work aspect, because um, I would do a lot of work, you know, for social justice advocacy, I would love to see um, fans get behind a lot of more issues, um, like different fandoms come together on these issues and not just one fandom in particular doing one. I would love to see just like um, like, the, like the silos that didn't break down, kind of like Sean said, I would love to see that on social issues in particular and everyone kind of building a coalition of just fans, um, empowering other fans to do uh, work around like um, voter restrictions and all the other things that we have that are just like messing up our world right now. I like that hashtag you put in the chat, Sean. Yeah. Build like Voltron. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I don't know. I wanna see I wanna see something that I think we've hit on both things here, but which is that fan spaces um con continue to be and continue to evolve into um a place for action and a place for joy. Um, and, and that they, it, it continues to tie those things together, you know, cause so much of, uh, you know, so much of the, the really big, really big problems facing the world right now are things that you feel like so helpless and so joyless. And I think really actively trying to combine like things that make us feel joy and things that make us feel empowered and things that are impactful like that's that's going to just grow into a more powerful space and like also with the caveat of like you don't always need to like make your hobby into your everything you know and not mm -hmm. and not you know being careful to cross the line between 
like monotonize, mon not monotonizing. What's the word? Monetizing. Mon monetizing things. Yeah. Also monotonizing. Um, <laughs> and monotonizing them. Yeah. But being like finding the line between like how much you are using the thing that gives you joy to do other things because you want to keep it as a thing that brings you joy because that is like enough in itself. Um, but I don't know. I just think. I think we've talked about all these skills that fandom has for like making really big change and for making big change feel possible, um, mm -hmm. partic particularly for people who maybe are not naturally inclined to just show up to the movement, you know? Um, and so continuing to focus on those spaces as like, this can be a place for empowerment and this can be a place for joy and not like separating those two things from each other, I think is uh mm -hmm. would be would be a great thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean everyone has pretty much said like all the all the good stuff that we pretty much need and um yeah like just just being able to like bring those separate like fan communities together towards like one specific goal because i mean when you go to comic-con you don't just go to like the one pan like people like a variety of stuff and so just bringing that together and hopefully doing good stuff with that kind of power like right now um like i know i live near the dc area so like obviously like the refugee crisis from afghanistan has been a huge thing but like uh yesterday there was a call for my local community community college that you know they need supplies for people like whatever you have clothes toys for the kids like whatever you have and I, it was it was i mean it's not a good thing what's happening but a good thing that i did see is just the number the sheer number of people that were there at that location just dropping off like bags and boxes of stuff and like diapers and like all stuff and like the the location eventually was like we are good like take it to other locations like we have mm -hmm. the supplies we need like just being able to have more of those moments where like things are actually getting done and bringing like the power of these fan communities behind it like would just be just mm -hmm. that that kind of joy that we need right now mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah I also like Alexis. I'm like you all have said so many smart things already. Um, I, <laughs> we saw I, I, I love everyone here, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm on board. All your stuff is great. Um, <laughs> I think like I I think a lot about creating this, creating the worlds that we want within our own mini worlds. I think lately, like I, it's so easy to feel very kind of beaten down by um the lack of empathy we see in society right now the lack of like community mindedness the lack of community care um but there are also many examples of folks doing those things and i think i'm thinking a lot about how within my own fandom communities and within our fandom communities we can model the sorts of values that we are fighting for right like we can make our own spaces as much as possible the kinds of spaces that we want to fight for and kind of exist within that and show like this is what this is who we are and this is like the world that we're imagining and i think that fans are already so good about creating completely new worlds within fandoms like there are so many things that like we just we have our own lore and our own norms, not even like the lore of the media, but just the lore of like fandom, right? Like we already mm -hmm. do these things. And I think, um, you know, finding ways to open that up to more and more people um, and, and finding ways to kind of use that as a skill to, to, create, to create a better vision for what our communities could be as a whole um, is something I'm thinking about a lot personally. Mm -hmm um we have about six minutes left so i wanted to end on um where can folks find you but like within that what what steps can folks take if they want to get more involved in fan activism if they want to be more involved in kind of using their fandom for good how can folks connect with you or connect with places that you think um would be helpful for them what what's their next steps
Okay. I will go first. No one wants to self-promote. <laughs> Alexis, go for it. Yeah. Um, you can find Latinx Geeks uh, on all of these social medias. Uh, it's L-A-T-I-N-X Geeks. Um, and then uh, right now, uh, we've kind of been... Yes, thank you. Uh, we've kind of haven't been as active right now i have started a new job and trying to get hey. back into that yeah finally thank you pandemic <laughs> for that one year of unemployment Congratulations. <laughs> but uh but yeah so uh it's we've been kind of uh not as busy but i mean there are plenty of organizations that are doing really good work obviously fan them forward you guys are always awesome and always check them out but uh some local um a local place in DC that I am very fond of is um, called, I'll, I'll put it in the chat too, but it's called La Casa Ruby. Um, and it's like a home for transgender and queer youth and trying to help them out. And they've been doing a lot of good work um, during the pandemic and stuff. So definitely want to make sure people know about them. And then just, just look at your local like refugee sites for Afghan refugees. Cause that whole thing is just, it's just a problem right now and they definitely need all the help that they need especially if you have like kids toys and crayons and stuff like that just like make things just a little bit more normal for these kids um so yeah mm -hmm. Aww. our dc chapter of hpa which are we're fandom forward now but our name used to be hpa just finished a fundraiser for casa ruby That's oh nice awesome. hey um, Portia, I'm going to call you out. Where can folks find Black Girls Create? Um, at Black with BLK Girls Create on Twitter. Um, you can find our general things there. Um, I'm like, honestly, with people who are doing fandom work, it's Fandom Forward. Um, Black Girls Create, we are encouraging fan creation. Um, but not a fan, not a fan properties. Like you just be a fan and you're creating something. We want to see that, especially black people. Um, and yeah, like, I think that like the main people that I follow when it comes to the fan activism is fandom forward. So I can't really think of another <laughs> app I need to think of. Yeah. Porsche is really underselling the amount of work that Black Girls Create. Does yeah, so seriously, you guys are awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I don't know something out like of like activisty. It is activisty though to be yeah. like creating new work and new space of empowerment yeah. for Black women and like creating an audience for those people to then put their creations to the world. Like that's that's activism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay. So I will say, Stop it. <laughs> yes, you're we're empowering people. Quick quills. Um, if you go to our yeah. uh, Twitter, we're having good quick quills um, next month. Um, I want to. I I wish I could give you a date. We're having a no. We're having one in, a, in this week, possibly. I'm yeah, I think it's on the twenty seventh. I believe I it's well on the date. time is not real. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Um, so that's on the twenty seventh. We're having quick quills, which is just join us to write like you take like an hour or two of your day and we're all just going to sit and write together and talk about our progress that we've made and that is just like an open way that we promote like fan, uh, being a creator especially a creator of color black people uh, black women in particular so if you want to join us um, please do uh, we will be like retweeting people who have like if they you share we're gonna probably get, we'll retweet like what you get to write so hopefully if you're a writer um, and you feel like you need a little bit of motivation to write um, at some night this week, Just talking to myself because I need it. Um, <laughs> definitely join us on the 27th. Amazing. Yes. Uh, Sean, where can folks find you? What should they do? Um, so right now I'm been kind of, I'm, you know, for nerds of color .org, but I haven't been as involved lately because I'm working on a lot of personal projects. Um, I'll be launching a online course for middle to high schoolers using fandom for self empowerment. And Ooh. because I have I have a daughter that's extremely shy, but she found her geek voice and just played the lead in Hamlet. No. <laughs> so so awesome. um so we're doing all these things. So I'll be launching this course coming up. Um, I want to say December. I'll be launching this course. That's going to be kind of fun to do. Um, I also think to get involved. Um, for me, I'm a huge comic. As you see, comics rule everything around me. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge comics fan, and I would say work with your local comic shop and organize something small there. You can do 
redefines there. You can do small things there. That way you already have a community right. hub yeah. and that gets integrated into our larger community. And so I think I think if you want to take one action, connect with your local comic book store, your local tabletop gaming store or whatever, and try to do one thing with them because you'd be surprised at how open a lot of these proprietors mm -hmm. really are to do change because they're in the community for a reason. Sometimes mm -hmm. they just need a little bit of nudge to take a, a little bit more action. That's Love it. And then our last moment here. I can say um, it really fast. You should yeah, join Fandom it. Forward. Go to fandomforward.org slash join. <laughs> We're going to have an avatar cam campaign coming up. It's probably tomorrow. tomorrow. So you will be in on the ground floor. We're going to do all other kinds of cool things, too. We got Percy Jackson plans. We got, I don't know, there's a new Lord of the Rings show coming out. There's all kinds of cool stuff, stuff we could do. But join so us there. You, you can there. also start chapters and stuff. It's great. Your chapter could meet at a comic book shop or library they could. You or whatever you want. Anyway, it'll be really great. Right. You'll be surrounded by people who are loving, friendly, very gay. Just come and be with us. <laughs> and be merry. And be merry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. change the world. Thank you all so much. Thanks for this conversation. Thanks for everybody in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Yay. conference. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. All right, thank Bye. you. Thank you. Next round will start in 600.